Welcome, welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Any of my three guests you would want to hear, but when you put three world-class prophets together, there is a synergy of the Spirit that I'm expecting things to happen that they've never thought of. I'm expecting you to have an amazing encounter with God. Two of the three prophets, when they were previously on my shows, prophesied with 100% accuracy. Anyone interested in finding out what they see for 2017? The events of last year, 2016, have ushered in dramatic changes and uncertainty politically, economically, and concerning the ongoing challenges facing America, Israel, and the world. What does this year, 2017, hold for you and your loved ones? ISN, the It's Supernatural online TV network, God TV, and GEB America TV networks join together to bring you this exclusive live prophetic TV event, 2017 Prophetic Outlook. Joining Sid Roth are three prominent prophetic voices, Perry Stone, Cindy Jacobs, and Rich Vera. They will share what God has revealed to them and how you can be prepared to overcome every obstacle that has kept you from receiving the full promises and blessings of God in your life. And now, here's your host, Sid Roth. and viewers, as well as our broadcast partners, GB America, God TV, and for the very first time, METV covers all of Israel and the entire Middle East. We are joined by viewers from right here in America, as well as Europe, Spain, Ireland, Scandinavia, Asia, India, Africa, uh, the entire Middle East, Australia, New Zealand, Israel, and so much more. Thank you. Now, many of you, thank you. Now, you, you can applaud at, hand, uh, at home, too. You're not applauding me, you're applauding God. So, are you ready to hear what God has for 2017? Many of you sent us questions, and it's amazing. Most of your questions we were going to talk about anyway. So God preempted you. You're really ready to know what's going to happen in 2017? <laughs> well, Cindy, I am personally very, very intrigued on the gift of prophecy, especially a prophetess. Uh, and I always ask a question, was there someone in your family that prophesied? You know, Sid, my dad was a Baptist pastor, so we wouldn't have called it that, but he did prophesy. You know, when he was preaching, he would mm. give like a word and all that there are people there that, you know, you have all these packs of cigarettes in your pockets and they rush to the front, you just pour them out of their pockets until, you know, they were spilling over. But we didn't know how he knew that. But, you know, he had the gift of prophecy. And you had that from a very early age at... at um, uh, was it uh, three? Four. Four? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Close. Yeah, what happened at four? Close. Well, uh, my dad was in seminary in Fort Worth, and uh, I went to my mother, and I said, Mom, I'm going to have a little baby sister. And she said, well, no, we're not having any more children. I said, no, I'm going to have a little sister. And why, she was why pregnant. Were you, why were you so sure you were going to have a little sister? I knew. I okay. guess it was a gift of faith. You know, I mean, she was, she, yes. she didn't know she was pregnant. She wasn't visibly pregnant. And actually, I was always kind of an unusual child. <laughs> I'm, you know, I mean, people would call the house, and I'd look at the phone when it was ringing, and I'd say, oh, so-and-so died. You know, I mean, I knew. You know, I was having dreams. And it was very unique. Some of them, 
you know, like I'd had one time I had a visions of hell, you know, and, mm. and I, 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 at night after night I dreamed about hell, what it looked like. And I would just, I was 12, and I would just get up and pace the floor. I didn't want anybody to go there, you know, and it's so real. And uh, so, you know, that gift just grew as time Well, went at on. nine, you really had a heartfelt prayer to God. You were at a, mm -hmm. a, a camp, a right. Christian camp. What did you pray? Well, the teacher said, go sit on a rock and let God talk to you. I did, and he did, you know. <laughs> and, he, and, uh, and what he said was, you know, uh, I have something for you to do. You know, he, in other words, there was a calling there. But, you know, Sid, it wasn't in my paradigm. You know, I went forward, mm -hmm. gave my yeah. life for world missions, but, you know, I couldn't do most of the things those little boxes said. But I could go preach in Africa. And so I gave my life, you know, for world missions. But I know it was a call in the nations. And, and then, 21 years later, mm. God answered that prayer of what you were supposed to do. But it wasn't <laughs> the way you thought it would be. Here, you're married with a couple of kids. Uh, and, and what does God say to you? Yeah, well, he's, then he said, I want, to, I want to use you to preach all over the world. And I thought, that was a pizza dream. You know, I'm 30, I have little children. I, and besides, nobody knows me, you know. In fact, somebody might be, you know, in their home and, and saying the same thing. Well, you know, something's happening to me. I think God wants to use me. Well, I was in a little town in Texas, and God found me and opened all these doors. I mean, fast. I went from preaching almost nowhere to churches of 5,000 members, you know, for their women's groups and a lot of things like that. So God was in a hurry. Now, one of the first words uh, that you heard when God was in the process of teaching you obedience was probably a little scary for you. It, it involved a Jewish person. <laughs> Wouldn't you know? <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Yeah, I, 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 one day I was driving the street, felt I should go buy a light fixture. There was this little obscure store, and I went in, and they had beautiful fixtures. And I said to the man, oh, you're having a big sale. You know, the owner, uh, why are you selling out everything? He said, well, I am very, very ill. I mean, like to the point of death. And so I said, oh, I'm so sorry. But, you know, I didn't know that God wanted to separate, to, to accelerate sorry into supernatural. And uh, so I started to leave, and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go pray for him. I'm going, I want you to heal him. And, you know, my kids, I thought, oh, my Lord, you know, they're going to tear the place apart while I'm trying to lay hands on somebody. You know, I mean, you have to be very gifted to get a hold of, you know, a five and a whatever, a three-year-old and hold him in place, you know. Very supernatural. Yeah, it, that, that <laughs> That was probably one of the most supernatural things of the day. So I prayed for this Jewish guy, and he thanked me. I left. Months later, I was driving down the road, and I noticed his store was open. And I went in, and I said, how are you? And he said, are you the one? Are you? That little mother, think about that, that little mother that prayed. And he said, God healed me. And it was so wonderful. You know, what can, what can one little mother do? Come on, we can change the world. Amen. What, you know, there are people watching right now, and you're saying, I wish I could hear God's voice uh, as well as Cindy. Cindy, you have such a passion that came from God to help people hear God's voice. Can everyone hear God's voice? Yes. You know, we believers, when we come to know the Lord and we ask the Holy Spirit to empower us, everyone can hear God's voice. There's no junior-sized Holy Spirit. God lives big in all of us. And I think this is one of the things people think, well, there's big superstars up there, right. and then there's little me. And, you know, I'm just never going to be anything but little me. I think the difference is with me and maybe some of them, I wanted to let the Holy Spirit out. I wanted him to use me. And so I just started praying audacious prayers. And I started just those nudges from the Lord, those little nudges said, I just do what he said. And people started getting healed and started getting changed. You know, we're, none of us are meant to live a boring, stupid life, you know. I, uh, you know, I agree. <laughs> Speaking about not living a boring life, you're in Costa Rica. You see someone that is ravaged by a stroke. Right. 
and you prophesy something very outrageous. Yeah, to that yeah, man. yeah. That was an outrageous day. I was leaving the stadium. <laughs> and, oh, by uh, the way, <laughs> I have an idea. Every day is outrageous. Let's for you. do it, Jesus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my goals in life. Every day to live a supernatural day like yours. So I was leaving the stadium. I was going out. And there was a man in a wheelchair, and he had a stroke. I mean, he was like, you know, really crunched up. And so I walked past him, and a voice said to me, just like you can hear that voice, a voice said to me, I want you to go prophesy he'll be the next president of Costa Rica. Well, I look back, and man, he didn't look like he was a candidate. It, it would be very easy for you to miss that. Yeah, it would. Take no talent yeah, at all. Yeah, sometimes you have to take a little risk, you know? So. <laughs> that's not a little risk. Yeah, thing. Well, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, but I built up to it. Can I say that? So, anyway, so all of a sudden, the Lord says, Cindy Jacobs, you know, I don't know about you, you know, in the Jewish household, but when my mother called me two names, I was in big trouble. Cindy Jacobs, I told you to go tell that man he's going to be the next president. I whipped around, I went back to his wheelchair, and I said, the, you know, I probably said, the Lord says you're to run for president, you will be the next president of this country, you're going to expose corruption, on and on and on. Well, Boy, I didn't were know you getting it. nervous when you were saying this? No, because by then I was under the anointing. Yay oh, okay. for the anointing! <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I mean, you know, the gift of faith comes with it. Right. You know, actually, and so, and so, uh, I left. Two years later, I was down there taping for Spanish TBN, and I got a call, and they said the president would like to see you. And I said, well, you know, me a little faith. Who is the president? It was that man. And so I go in, and this, listen, listen to this part, Sid, you'll love this. I go in, of course, so this happens to me pretty often. All the secular news networks are there, because he told everybody about that. And he's completely healed. And they're going like, what is this, telepathy? I mean, how do you hear this stuff? Right. You know, so anyway, so then I began to prophesy other things, you know, a little more private. And he put, uh, I think, maybe three former presidents in jail for corruption. And he did it, and he was completely healed. You know, but the good news is, these hands are made to lay on the sick. Did you hear what she said? Yes. You were created to move in miracles. That's right. You were created to prophesy. Absolutely. You were created, excuse me, paper, I didn't mean to do this. <laughs> get excited. You were, you were, when you get excited, say, get excited. Else. <laughs> you were created to lay hands on the sick and see them recover. Okay, Cindy. Yeah. Uh, it, it keeps growing. This is uh, fun. You know, I mean, you, uh, one night, God tells you to pray for someone, and this person turned out to be the shoe bomber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm married to this wonderful man who's going to get a lot of stars in his crown for being married to me. I waken him up out of, you know, I don't know, two in the morning and say, Mike, wake up right now. There's a terrorist getting on a plane. You know, and he's trying to like, <laughs> like he gives me his hand, you know. So I said, you know, I was binding terrorism and saying the plane isn't going to blow up, it's not going to work, uncover it. Well, it was a shoe bomber. You know, and, and you know how people So supernaturally, overcame. it did not work. Right. Because right. someone like you right. were a greater obedient. authority. Obedient a greater pray. authority came into play. So, <laughs> next time at 2 in the morning, when God says pray, get up and pray. Amen. Get up and pray. Amen. Okay, uh, now, this is what intrigues me the most of everything, and that is you are part of uh, the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders. Right. And they meet, uh, and they want to find out what God is doing for the year. Right. And the, the thing that also excited me is you have a new generation of we prophetic do. elders coming in. So tell me some bottom lines of what they see for 2017. Well, you know, these are, these are very respected prophets, Sid, but also those coming up underneath us, Bishop Hammond, James Gall, Dutch Sheets, I mean, mm -hmm. really, Rick Writings from Israel. Uh, bottom line, the number 17 means complete victory. I like that bottom line. <laughs> I like that bottom line. That's right. Line. Overcoming 
to complete victory. And I want, I feel the anointing of God said when I am saying this, there are some people who have waited and waited and waited for their breakthrough. And this is the breakthrough year. And I want to tell you, if you'll stand on this word, no matter what slimy things the enemy tries to do, if you stand up and say, no, the word of the Lord is, this is my breakthrough year. It's going to happen. Well, okay. Does... I know numbers and names are so important in the mm -hmm. Bible. Mm -hmm. Does the year 2017 have prophetic insight? Yes, it, because the number 17 means breakthrough. And in the Hebrew, as you know better than I do, 5777, this is the year of the crown, sword, meaning great authority is coming. The sword of the Lord is going to cut off deception. It's going to cut off evil intent of our enemies. It's going to be cut off. The enemy is going to be cut off at the pass, as we say in Texas, good colloquialism. And so, you know, God is going to do this. In fact, you, I know you know this, but when President Trump was inaugurated, he was 70 years old and seven months and seven days. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh. yeah, five, seven, seven, seven. What are the odds when God put all this together, many prophets prophesying about Trump coming into the office, that he would be exactly that age? You know, even if you weren't for him, that might give you incentive to pray for him. Well, what, what is God showing the council and you about President Trump? Well, you know, many prophets have said he's the 45th president and he's a Cyrus. And, you know, Cyrus I... Cyrus built the temple. Uh, for the Jewish people. I mean, exactly. not only that, the Bible said he would do it a couple hundred years before he was even born. Yes. I mean, talk about the authenticity and the accuracy of the Bible. And can God do it today? Of course, if we believe. And I, and I know that God is getting ready to pour out the greatest awakening America has ever known. Amen. I'm telling you, it is, we're in it. We're in it. Not only that, this is the year, the 500th anniversary of the Reformation of Luther. And October 31st is Reformation Day. But I want to tell you, this is the time to reform America yeah. back yeah. to God. And so, you know, I, I believe that, that God called him to do this office. Yeah. And I really feel that he came to know the Lord. And, and as he came to know the Lord, and as we pray, God is going to anoint him. You know, we mobilize in our 50-state prayer network coast to coast for this first 100 days of administration. The first day, we had 48,000 praying for him. My goodness. Yeah, 48,000 on Facebook Live praying together. Now, you have so many revelations on uh, what God is going to do with new technology, new ways mm -hmm. of making money, new ways for Christians to be the head and not the tail. I want to have you back in a little bit on this show, and I want you to tell us some of those ways. Okay. Because I'll tell you, when we were doing the radio interview, <laughs> the people were getting so excited. But I have Perry Stone coming up, and Perry Stone has a prophetic word that will revolutionize your life. Trust me. We will return with more of our special presentation of the 2017 Prophetic Outlook TV special in just one moment. The supernatural of God knows no bounds, and now there are no limits to equipping you to receive your supernatural miracle anytime, any place. ISN. The It's Supernatural online network is now available for your mobile devices and smart TVs. The message of the Bible has not changed, but it's a 21st century world out there, and how we learn about God's miraculous direction for our lives has changed. ISN takes our anointed programs out of the box and gives you complete freedom to watch what you want, when you want, and where you want. ISN offers live streaming of programs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right on your mobile devices or smart TVs. Or you can choose from dozens of powerful episodes of exclusive programs in our online library. Get ready to receive your supernatural breakthrough whenever you need it, wherever you are. Download the free ISN app today. 
And now, back to our 2017 Prophetic Outlook TV special. Now, the last time my guest, Perry Stone, was on the air, I asked him, what has God shown you about the next president? And you'll be amazed at what he said. Let's roll that clip. So I start looking at number 45. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. This is crazy. If you take the 40 and the 5 in the Hebrew alphabet, it's ma. Not mom, but ma. Do you know what the word ma means? What? It means what? what? Yeah. Yeah, it means in, what? In Israel, if I was, he say, was talking, Ma? I'd say, Ma? What? What did okay. you say? Here's what's going to happen. Everybody mark this down. Whoever gets in, people are going to say, What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're going to say. Remember, what? How did this happen? What? What is going on? What? Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Perry, yeah. when I, I, I wasn't watching CNN, I was sleeping. My wife was watching <laughs> CNN yeah. on, on the, the night of the election, right. and she said she could not believe what these commentators were saying, she, and they said, what? <laughs> Constantly. They, it was really humorous because on one of the major networks, three days later, the lady looked and said, all the American people are saying, what? And my wife just looked at me and shook her head. Because, uh, let me just say quickly, biblical numbers have meanings. Right. And they do correlate with the Hebrew alphabet, which is God's alphabet. It's God's language. And a lot of clues or hints, as you know, the rabbis have four levels of interpretation. Remes is one of them, which means a hint. And it doesn't necessarily tell you specifically what will happen, but it will hint to it. And a lot of times in studying uh, prophecy from the Hebraic perspective, we get hints, not necessarily a direct word, but a hint to say, look out for this. So I think that was a hint. Uh, that that <laughs> was a the, real hint. That was a real accurate hint. I want to know what you really see, though, for President Trump now that he's president. Well, let me just say this, not trying to be, I'm not going to drop names or anything, but uh, the person who's been his pastor for about 10 years, because about 10 years ago he had a real experience in his heart, mm -hmm. a heart change, uh, been his pastor for about 10 years. Uh, I can tell you that for a fact, I don't know, uh, I, I go back as far as I was a kid, Nixon and Reagan and, you know, Bush and Clinton and, of course, President Obama. There has not been, to my knowledge, and I have known guys in the Secret Service that guarded presidents, four presidents, five, you know what I'm saying. So I'm, right. I'm, I've been around a while. Uh, but I can tell you that he surrounds himself with more believers, not professed believers, not people who say they are, but in their heart are actual believers. And he listens to their counsel. Uh, I don't want to get, get any kind of inside thing or discussions that have been made, but I think whether a person has voted for him or not, especially if you call yourself a believer, uh, the, think about this. At the inauguration, I'm sitting in a room with 400 other believers at the Reagan Center just watching this, and the name of Jesus got more attention that day than any inauguration Amen. I can ever remember. Okay. You know what? And, and, I, and I, can, I, can I say this, and, and I'm not going to give away too much, but when, when, you, when you pray those prayers globally, they tell you not to say the name of Jesus. Every other administration will say, say God or say the Lord. Uh, he, those, those people who prayed were told, I quote, Pray what the Holy Spirit tells you to. Amen. And that's amazing. That, that, that normally does not happen. I think that's pretty amazing. Now, but God spoke to you a right now word for 2017. Mm -hmm. What was that? There's, I love what Cindy said. She's so right, but I'm going to add to what she said. The 17th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the letter uh, Pe, which the symbol is the mouth. And this is the year where blessings are released, but blessings come through the confession. With the heart you believe, with the mouth you confess. And I did a teaching at uh, our OCI t Center on Tuesday nights. We have service. And I talked about 2017 from the Gregorian calendar, the number 17. Mm -hmm. You know Bible numbers mean things. Absolutely. They have meanings. And so that symbol is the mouth. And what I see of this year is believers must learn to, in order to obtain victory, to know how to confess the word with their mouth. Yeah. 
We can no longer just pray and sit back and wait for God to do it. We have to begin to claim with our mouth the promise. But I want to say something else to the church. Now, everybody pay attention. This is, and I taught this, the year to learn to shut up. This is the year to learn when to keep your mouth shut. Could it be that the presence of God will be so strong there will be immediate consequence as opposed to taking forever? I'm I'm telling you, my youth group never heard me preach this message, and they were in a big conference, and the Lord said, this is the year not to talk about each other, not to talk about other believers, not to criticize other people. And for believers even, let's just, and I know uh, President Obama uh, got a lot of criticism, and some of it was very undue because people just didn't like him, and President Trump's getting the same. But when believers cannot recognize that the name of Jesus was spoken, the the Lord was exalted, God was given credit for protecting us, and you're surrounded by believers... Okay, Jewish, there's, there's Jewish rabbis there. Right. There's Christians there. There's, there's believers there. His top uh, advisor uh, is Jewish. His e- son e- exactly. So in, so in other words, we have got to look beyond, and I get so tired, everybody getting their information from the media. Since when are we as believers called to pay attention to what media people who don't even believe in God are telling us? Amen. We should be hearing from the Holy Spirit. And when we can, and, you know, and, and when we confront people, when we, when people are confronting us or we're confronting people, we have to learn to say, you know what, enough's enough. Keep your mouth shut. Amen. I don't want to hear it. And so this is the year to claim the blessing by taking the word and confessing it as never before, releasing the power of God. And I feel the anointing real heavy right now. But the other part of this is believers have to learn. Quit going. Look, can I say something? You have Facebook. I have Facebook. Great media. But since when do you have to post on Facebook your opinion when you were never asked to post your opinion? I mean, why do people always think that when you post anything, they've got to give you their opinion when you didn't ask for it? This nose, I'm going to take my glasses down. See this nose, how big it is? It's not as big as it was when I was a kid because my face filled out. But look here. You know why it's big? I kept it out of other people's business and gave it a chance to grow. Okay? So there's a word. That word, that word is learn to speak and learn when not to speak. Here's what I've learned. You know? Your words are magnets. Sure. In other words, if you're saying good and pleasant and positive type things, you're attracting good. If you're saying negative yeah. things, that magnet is drawing the demonic. It's true. Now, what do you want to draw? <laughs> so Choose true. this day what you want to so draw. True. Perry, yes, uh, I, I am fascinated by what you call Satan's manifesto against America. Yeah. Explain. Well, let me just say this, that, that there is a plot and a strategy in the United States of Satan himself. And here's the reason why. We are the nation, still are the nation, that promotes the gospel through Christian television. Most of your network's headquarters are in the United States. Now, some are overseas, but most are in the United States. We are still the leading nation for sending missionaries out. The money that comes to support missions comes predominantly from the United States. We are still predominantly the nation to take care of widows and orphans, build Bible schools, print Bibles. So the the, the job of the enemy is to somehow try to affect, in some way, the ability of the body of Christ. And the body of Christ is large. It's not a particular denomination. It's people whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life from all over the world. That's the body of Christ. But it's his job to disrupt the plan of God, and I'm going to tell you what I see, and I just want to share this from my heart at this moment. One of the things I see, and this cannot happen to us, is the enemy is doing his best to create a racial division again in the United States. And if we as the body allow this racial division to come, uh, I know of a great gospel singer, won't name her, but she just got cancellations from a lot of African-American churches because she happened to be at the inauguration. Now, I want to talk to you for a moment as believers Okay, we're believers. You may be white, but if you're in the kingdom and your name is in heaven, we're family. If you're black and your name is in heaven, we're family. If you're Hispanic and your name is in heaven, we're family. We have got to stop this mess where we make everything political in the body of Christ. We say, well, I'm of this or I'm of that or you support him and you didn't support that, so we're going to divide over this. Blood should be thicker than politics. Amen. The blood, 
you know, the, the, the New Testament taught that we are one blood through Messiah. Yes. That, and, that, and this is the reason why, why, and we know that ethnically there's Jews, ethnically Gentiles, mm -hmm. ethnically Hispanic. We know that. But the reason Paul emphasized that through Messiah, that we're, we're one blood, we're one nation of people, is to get, the, you know, in the, in the early church, there was conflict between Gentiles being grafted in. They didn't understand right. it, okay? Yes. We're having the same thing happen today with our ethnic divisions. Yep. And we've got to sit down as, as African Americans, as white folks, as Hispanic folks, and we've got to say, wait a minute, guys. Our primary purpose is we are in the kingdom. We are a kingdom in a nation. We're from another country. We're from another, that's what Paul taught. We are from another world, another country. Our priority should be unifying around Jesus Christ, Amen. the power of his blood, the power of the Holy Spirit to deliver, and let all this other stuff drop by the wayside. Uh, because I'm telling you, between the talking heads of a secular media that's ungodly, that literally despises Christianity, and preachers, pardon me, who are man be pamby who will not preach the truth anymore. And they become so sensitive to the feelings of other people that they're not giving people the power of the gospel. There's a power in the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, there's, oh, I feel it. There's radical conviction, radical conversion. Saul of Tarsus was a radical conversion. There's a radical conversion that should come. And so I want to encourage, and what I see, I, this is just part of it. I see the enemy attempting to disunify and break apart the body of Christ by racial and ethnic division. It has to stop. And preachers, it has to start with you. Amen. You have to get behind your pulpit. If you're African-American, Caucasian, Hispanic, you're going to say, folks, we are the body of Christ first. Yes. We are the kingdom first. Yes. We are ki and I know this is going to sound heavy for some people. I'm a Christian first. I'm an American next. Amen. I but love America. But that's biblical. I'm a, I'm a believer. That, that, I'm, that a believer. Biblical. I'm a believer what? first. I'm a believer first. In a matter of a couple of minutes, just uh -huh. so they can get a taste, yeah. and when we come back with the group, you'll, you'll explain uh -huh. more uh, th this, this manifesto against America. But in a couple of sentences, explain what you see. I, one of the things, and, I, and we won't have time to talk about this, but we went into our studio to, to make available for you, as you know, your ministry, right. a teaching that the Lord gave me many years ago. I saw it years ago, and I kept it in my spirit. You know what? I have never seen what you taught. So you, 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 I know you're it familiar with it. You always listen to all the, all the material that comes up to you. Uh, oh, no, I'm saying I have never seen what I read of this. On that, okay. No. One of the things was the strategy of Balaam. And uh, it, it, it made no sense. I'm going to go through this real quick. It made no sense that Balaam's name was so negative in the Bible when if you go to the book of Numbers, he was told to curse Israel, right? But he didn't really curse them. He came back later and said, I can't curse what God has blessed. Now, did he take the money? Yes. And so there was a compromise there. But I realized as I started reading Revelation, I read Numbers, and I started reading Jewish history, this man did something to try to cause God to turn against his own people. That's the Balaam strategy. And it's the strategy of the enemy. It's the strategy. If I were to sum up a strategy of Satan, I would sum it up in the phrase, the Balaam strategy. And the reason we only have so much time in each segment, and I know I'm going to run out of time here, but it would take about 15 to 20 minutes to explain it in detail. But it's really what is happening in the United States right now. It's, it's definitely it. Well, you use a word in your description about compromise. Yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, when I, when I, being a minister of the Word, I was raised in a full gospel church where I saw the nine gifts of the Spirit operate. Compromise would be for me to deny what I saw. I'm compromising what I saw. I saw miracles of healing under Dr. T. L. Lowry and great men of God that literally gorders would disappear. I mean, men that couldn't walk. If I were to say, I saw it and I know what the Word says, but I don't believe that. I've totally, completely compromised. Uh, so we think, we think of compromise as only being sin, but I'm telling you, people are compromising the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Wow. There are people who believe that Jesus was a... There's Christians who believe He was a prophet, but we're just not sure He was the Son of God. They even did a survey with some mainline nominal ministers who don't even believe Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Hmm. So my point is that there's a I could a tell you a lot worse oh. that they're, they're doing right now, but, that, but then I had a guest that said, I got to watch my mouth. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> see there, see there, you took the, you took that word. Okay, but what, the comp what, the comp what is going to happen in America? Just brief. Two two quick things. There's going to be two parallel tracks. There will be some very great national na, nat, na, uh, national natural disasters in the next few years. People are seeing it prophetically all over the place. That's going to happen. We have to be prepared for that. On the, at the same time, and I want to say this very quickly, the real jubilee year was not last year. The real jubilee year is this year. Well, no, they, for real. This is the jubilee cycle. Okay. Speaking of the jubilee year, yeah. when we come back, I'm going to have Rich Vera with me. Now, Rich Vera has found uh, the most amazing prophetic word of what's about ready to happen. He says in 2017, God will break longstanding strongholds that have stopped your prayers, family, finances, health, and how to get a breakthrough. Anyone interested? Wow. We will return with more of our special presentation of the 2017 Prophetic Outlook TV special in just one moment. Is it possible to hear the voice of God directly? Is the gift of prophecy only to be given to special people? Or can any believer be used by God through his powerful gift of the Holy Spirit? The truth is God is still speaking in and through believers, and he wants to speak through you too. Cindy Jacobs wants to teach you how to listen for God's prophetic words and bring his message to the world around you. Call now and get the 2017 Prophetic Outlook gift package, which includes Cindy Jacobs' landmark book, The Voice of God. Plus, this anointed three-part audio CD series, The 2017 Prophetic Outlook. On these CDs are three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera. They will reveal powerful words that God has given them for you during this breakthrough year. This series is exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9457. Cindy Jacobs' book is for you. Whether you're a new believer or already operating in the the gift of prophecy. Through this book, you will learn to hear God's voice more clearly and speak His prophetic words to others. Begin to exercise the God-given ability of an effective prophetic intercessor. Learn how to deliver prophetic words to redeem, uplift, build faith, and help bring new direction in your life and to the lives of others. Understand the biblical protocol concerning speaking prophetic words in the church. Find out the keys on how to interpret prophetic dreams and visions. Plus, you will receive this anointed three-part audio CD series, the 2017 Prophetic Prophetic Outlook. It includes three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. On CD number one, Cindy Jacobs delivers the word of the Lord for 2017 as given to the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, and she prays for you. You will also hear the complete prophetic word of the Lord as given to Cindy, read by Giselle Fleming, known for her role in the Christian movie, The War Room. On CD number two, Perry Stone delivers a right now word for this year. He answers these questions. Has our nation been given a reprieve? What is Satan's manifesto against America? What is God's assignment for the United States in 2017? How can we walk in all the promises and blessings that God has for us in 2017? On CD number three, Rich Vera shares a specific word for you concerning 2017 as being a time of long-awaited breakthroughs and unexpected victories in the areas of family, salvations, relationships, healing, and finances. Don't miss out on getting the 2017 Prophetic Outlook gift package, which includes Cindy Jacobs' landmark book, The Voice of God, plus this anointed three-part audio CD series, The 2017 Prophetic Outlook. On these CDs are three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera. They will reveal powerful words that God has given them to help you be ready to overcome and walk in all the promises and blessings God has for you during this breakthrough year. This series is exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9457. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9457 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. And now, back to our 2017 Prophetic Outlook TV special. Well, 
the last time Rich Beer was on It's Supernatural, he said some pretty outrageous things. He said that he saw we were on the brink of a cure for Alzheimer's. We were on the brink of a cure for cancer. Uh, but guess what we've been seeing in the headlines? <laughs> exactly what you prophesied. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Rich, another thing that is so, I'm sitting here interviewing yes. my guests, and I think I'm interviewing you, but I know they don't know what you told me. It's amazing. I mean, they were, uh, everything, <laughs> let me tell you something. All the things I have here, <laughs> most of them you've already heard from them. Did you t counsel them? Did you teach no, them? No, I'm, I'm amazed. You know, the, the prophetic is not about releasing words. It's about releasing spirit. Yes. You know, and when people are in the same spirit, the prophetic spirit, there is a spirit that's rele being released upon the people. And I believe today around the world, you and your houses, God is releasing a spirit of what we're talking about that's going to impact your life, is going to impact the nations of the world. I see an incredible uprising in nations that is going to take place starting this season. I saw Egypt coming into an incredible revival. In mm. Egypt, there's going to be a Holy Ghost bomb that's going to be dropped on Egypt. And the Holy Spirit is going to, I mean, the miracle signs and wonders that are going to come out of Egypt is going to shake the entire region. This is the season for the nations. This is the season that God is going to sort out the true vessels that he has called and anointed against the ones that are self-appointed. We are in a season that God is going to separate, and it's going to be an incredible time to behold. But you know what? When, it, when that separation occurs, but there, there is still time to repent, and God will restore everything. As a matter of fact, you yeah. talk about something you call, or God calls, the law of attraction. Explain that. Yeah, you know, Christmas Day, I, I woke up with this vision, and, and the voice of the Lord spoke to me and says, I'm releasing the law of attraction over my people. So I sat down, and I've never heard that before. And as I'm getting off the bed, I heard the verse that says, He that has, more shall be given. And he that don't have, what he has shall be taken away. So I'm going to the bathroom thinking, like, what in the world this means? And the Lord just downloaded information. And he says, we're living in a season where all the seeds that have been sown, and I'm not just talking about money, right. prayer, faithfulness, people that stuck to church faithfully. All the seeds that we have shown in love, in kindness, this is the season that God is going to literally activate it, that is going to come back to us, the seeds that we sow. Okay. Not just financially, not just financially, All right. but also includes financially. All right. What would, what would you say to the person that's watching and say, Rich, I have been praying for 40 years for my unsaved family. And candidly, I'm getting tired of the same prayers and not seeing results. What would you say? I would say, hold on. <laughs> because the season that we're living in right now, Perry Stone said it, Cindy Jacobs said it, it's a special season. Everybody talks about breakthrough, you know? But breakthrough is a nice sermon, but breakthrough is also the release of a spiritual activity upon a people that are ready for breakthrough. Now, breakthrough don't happen just because you claim breakthrough. It happens when you, are, you have prepared your life, you have taken the right steps to walk into breakthrough. One of those is being faithful to God, church attendance, living a life surrendered to Jesus. You know, are you faithful in your giving, in your tithing, if you want financial breakthrough, and so many more things. And this is the season that God is going to bring breakthrough to many of our lives. But now, the Lord spoke this to me and says, but, and those that have been unfaithful. I was just going to ask you, there are many people. Many. Uh, they, they haven't given to God. They haven't prayed. They, they, they just gave up. up. Yeah. You know, the Lord told me he's going to. Uh, there, there's people, I mean, uh, yes. really, you're watching right now, and, and you have disease, yeah. and you're saying, I know what the Bible says. I believe what the Bible says, but frankly, I, I, I'm getting tired of praying. I'm not even going to pray anymore because it's been years that I've had this condition. You know, God is going to give them a chance to push that reset button and start all over again. This is the season to reset our lives. 
you know, it's time that we let go of the past. You know, some people went through through uh, bad marriages, went through uh, sins they fell into, through discouragement, they lost things financially around the world. It's time to let go of that because this season is going to bring resetting. God is going to give us a chance to go back to sowing good seeds that we may reap the harvest of blessings that God is going to draw to us is by that, the Holy Spirit. Is there enough time for those that have not planted the good seeds, whatever they are, prayer, etc.? Yes. Is there time to get in on what God's doing this it year? It is a time. It is. First of all, you know, uh, wake up and realize that, that Jesus is alive. He's not some statue hanging on the wall. He's alive. And if he's alive, you are alive. And the number two is go back to serve him. You, you, you cannot call yourself a born-again believer that loves Jesus, and you don't go to church. You cannot call, call on the blessings of God and want a prophecy for, for financial provision, and you're not being faithful in your giving. You, you, you cannot, I mean, the seeds that we sow, we're, we're going to track what we sow. It's, it's just a fact of life. Sir, I feel cancer is being healed right now. Would you allow me? There's people with cancer, liver cancer is being healed right now. God is going to touch you and deliver you. There are somebody with a cancer on the ear that God is setting free right now in the name of Jesus. Now, so Are God you, has given excuse us... Excuse me, I have to say Go this. Ahead. When a word comes forth, you say, I wish he had said my condition. I wish he had said my type of cancer. But you know, when that word comes forth, there is a power for healing of Grab anything, it. and you're missing out. So you get what God has for right. you right now, right. whether he says it or I say it or anyone it. says it. Dad, yes. let, let every man be a liar. God's word is true. Yeah. Amen to that. You know, so we have, we're living in an incredible season. You know, and even the, uh, the election of President Trump. You know, last time I was here, I prophesied that, and I got... Thousands of haters, now, but now, I love you anyways. Now, you are Hispanic. <laughs> yes. And I imagine you had a problem in your Hispanic I, I community. I had a problem, you know, but... So how can you be for Trump as a Hispanic? Because if God is for it, I'm for it. Amen. You know, I, no, I, I don't... You know, I was, saved, I, I was saved from the Catholic Church. I received the Holy Spirit. I fell in love with Jesus. I love His Word. I, I don't find it anywhere in between where men help me to get to obedience to Christ. If God speaks it, if he says it, I live it, and that's all there is to it. And I believe, like Perry Stone said, we have become so politically correct in churches that you cannot preach the truth. In Orlando, in my church, when I preach the truth, people write me trying to, uh, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. But the truth sets people free. And it's time in America... <laughs> Now listen to me, pastors. It's time that you go back to preach the message that the Holy Spirit's given you. And if the message causes you to lose church members, to lose money, so be it. Jesus lost 5,000 members in one sermon when he says, eat my blood, uh, drink my blood, and eat my flesh. And even the disciples, he says, do you also want to go away? He was not afraid of losing the crowd because he knew what he had the world needed. It's time to be free, to stand for the truth and the power of the Holy Spirit with miracles, signs, and wonders will hit your congregation once again in America and in the nations of the world. What, what, I'm curious, hmm. what else has God shown you about President Trump? You know, I mean, um, you were so right before yes. he won. You know, I have it on my notes here. The 5th of this month, I had a vision that he was walking through the Oval Office wearing a, a red shirt with a priest garment, like a Catholic priest garment. He was very friendly, greeting everybody in the house, even the people that were cleaning. And then he went right from there into the cockpit of a plane. And the plane went through turbulence. So when I go to the back to make sure that he was sitting down, he was on his knees praying to God. And the glow of the Holy Ghost was upon him. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, you know, I'm going to give him not only the authority to change government, but I will give him an anointing that he will pray and things will change. And God told me that the spirit of prayer was going to come over President Trump. And I want to declare over you, Mr. President, that God is going to use you to change the landscape of politics. God is going to use you to change. God is going to use you to raise up a new breed of politicians and even leaders in the church that will stand for the people and not for themselves. Amen. I saw that. Uh, we've been talking about the year 2017. Yeah. What has God told you about 17? You know, uh, 
just as Cindy Jacobs spoke, I'm, I'm amazed that we were just connected without talking. Uh, the Lord told me there's a year of incredible breakthroughs coming to us and unexpected, or I would say, long-awaited victories for us. How about things that have been stolen from us? You know, you know uh, breakthroughs and uh, restoration is part of breakthrough. You know, and I believe that, uh, I mean, the Lord spoke to me that he's going to cause things to come back our way. The things that came from him. There's a lot of things that God never gave us and people want to have them. Forget it. They're gone. But in this season, breakthroughs are coming. Restoration are coming. You know, family members are going to be saved. I mean, miracles are going to take place in families. You know, curses are going to be broken. Generational curses. And I want to release right now over America and the nations of the world that this is the season where the curses that the enemy put on your families for decades and years are coming to an end. The curse of sickness and poverty, the curse of fear, we break it out of your life in the name of Jesus. And I declare that a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming over your life today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, God, God has told me any problems you have in the eye, eye disease, anything, any type of cancer, you're being healed of right now in Jesus' name. And how would you like me to have all three of my guests together? How would you like a few of them? Do you want that? Can you imagine if the Holy Spirit has coordinated what he's done just now with them separate. Imagine what the Holy Spirit is going to do when they're all together. It's going to be explosive. I, 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 I know that there is going to be such a... Re do, do you agree this year is going to be a major move of God's Spirit? You know, I, I'm going to share what I told you earlier. The previous First Lady released a spirit of hopeless, hopelessness over the land on a TV interview, and we saw that surely spread throughout the land. And the Lord told me that he was going to cancel that spirit and cause the release of the spirit of faith to come back to the people in America, yeah. where they will believe once again, where they will have hope once again, and God is going to bring incredible prosperity over the land. See, this is the year that our prosperity is going to come in such a way that it will make the mystery of the previous years look like if it never happened. We're going to be right back. I know you're not going to go away. I love it. We will return with more of our special presentation of the 2017 Prophetic Outlook TV special in just one moment. Call now and get the 2017 Prophetic Outlook gift package, which includes Cindy Jacobs' landmark book, The Voice of God, plus this anointed three-part audio CD series, The 2017 Prophetic Outlook. On these CDs are three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera. They will reveal powerful words that God has given them for you during this breakthrough year. This series is exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9457. Cindy Jacobs' book is for you. Whether you're a new believer or already operating in the gift of prophecy, through this book you will learn to hear God's voice more clearly and speak His prophetic words to others. Begin to exercise the God-given ability of an effective prophetic intercessor. Understand the biblical protocol concerning speaking prophetic words in the church. Find out the keys on how to interpret prophetic dreams and visions. Plus, you will receive this anointed three-part audio CD series, the 2017 Prophetic Outlook. It includes three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. On CD number one, Cindy Jacobs delivers the word of the Lord for 2017 as given to the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, and she prays for you. You will also hear the complete prophetic word of the Lord as given to Cindy, read by Giselle Fleming, known for her role in the Christian movie, The War Room. On CD number two, Perry Stone delivers a right now word for this year. He answers these questions. Has our nation been given a reprieve? What is Satan's manifesto against America? How can we walk in all the promises and blessings that God has for us in 2017? On CD number three, Rich Vera shares a specific word for you concerning 2017 as being a time of long-awaited breakthroughs and unexpected victories in the areas of family, salvations, relationships, healing, and finances. Don't miss out on getting
receiving the 2017 Prophetic Outlook gift package, which includes Cindy Jacobs' landmark book, The Voice of God, plus this anointed three-part audio CD series, The 2017 Prophetic Outlook. On these CDs are three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera. They will reveal powerful words that God has given them to help you be ready to overcome and walk in all the promises and blessings God has for you during this breakthrough year. This series is exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience, yours. For a donation of $35, shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9457. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9457 or log on to SidRoth.org. And now, back to our 2017 Prophetic Outlook TV special. Once again, before we go off the air, I want to thank our broadcast partners. I want to thank GB America, God TV, and for the first time ever, METV, Middle East TV. Next, on ISN Live, this event you will not want to miss. It happens to be our 40th anniversary as a ministry, and I'm going to have Dr. Keith Ellis and Kevin Zadai and Jim Sonero is my guest. If you don't know this, they move in the glory. I believe at the end of 40 years, guess what happened? The Jewish people entered the promises, the promised land. Well, I believe on our 40th anniversary, we're going to be entering the glory. And that's why I absolutely need you to be with us. Uh, it, it's going to be on February 23rd. Mark your calendar down. Uh, and those that can stay with us, that's all of you right now, if you go to our free app, you uh, just log on to sidroth.org slash ISN or download our free ISN app and watch it 24-7. So here's how you download the app. I'm glad you asked. You just, at any smartphone in the world, you just go to the app store and you type in my name. S-I-D, Sid Roth, R-O-T-H. And it's a free app, I might add. And you'll see an orange app will appear. It says ISN. Download it. You'll see the rest of this show. Because let me tell you something. We're just getting started. There's going to be such a glory and revelation. That's what's going to happen. There's going to be revelation that will spout forth that some of my guests here have never even thought of. I'm going to push them. I want you to push them in the spirit to say all that God has to say. And, and when we come back, I expect words of knowledge. I expect miracles to be released. Go to the ISN app right now. It's free. Go to the app store, type in Sid Roth, uh, and, and just, uh, it'll be an orange ISN app, ISN, It's Supernatural Network. You know, the network's on seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Such a deal. You need that. And I'm expecting, are you? Yeah. We're expecting. We are. <laughs> Just as you expected. And, um, I, uh, you know, none of this is rehearsed. But I believe God knew it ahead of time. Perry Stone, what is God putting on your heart right now? I still want to go back to something that you and I have talked about. I don't know that we've talked about it much with your people. And that is uh, a word that came out August. Uh, uh, it'll be two years ago this August in Huntington, West Virginia, about how that the Lord was going to move in the Appalachian Mountain area. 
I remember uh, that. You remember I that? do. Yes. And we went, I canceled, I actually canceled several of the largest churches I go to, to go up in these mountains to these little churches. And we rented auditoriums. We rented, we rented the auditorium in Bluefield. We rented the armory. It was packed out. Welch, West Virginia, MacDowell County, the, the hardest hit economic county there is probably in West Virginia. Uh, let me tell you how bad it is. There's a town of 400 up there, a town of 400. And in three years, the pharmacy distributed 10 million pills. Mm. It's, you can't even imagine. It's, it's the most incredible uh, oppression and depression you'll ever encounter. Mm. And so we started going up in that area. And we just got back a few weeks ago, this is in January, to Mullins, West Virginia. Now, here's a little church in a town that half the town is shut down because what happened, because I am from West Virginia, was the past eight years, the regulations on the coal mines were so bad that they shut them all down. One mine lost 30,000 jobs. So in other words, this is a town hmm. where they, they, they got, and I, I blame it on the government. I'm going to be honest with you. It's the federal government, and they just took all the jobs from the people. And those people up there, they get a... The average income, ready, is ten thousand dollars a year. Yep. Hmm. Yep. It's it's it How literally can they even survive. They, they on don't, that? and that's why they turn to drugs. So we go yeah. up there and preach in that area. But I got to tell you what happened. I went to Mullins, West Virginia, little Pentecostal Honus Church. Town is half dead, and there's a youth group of about twelve kids is totally on fire. And I told him, I said, Jesus took twelve and turned the world upside down. He don't need right. a. He doesn't. Have, you don't have to have big youth group. Saturday night, <laughs> listen. My daughter is fifteen, and she says, Daddy, that's the greatest service I've ever been in. In a church with about 150 people there, packed out, and the glory hit, and a woman who had been offended at the church. Now listen, it's the youth pastor's mother, who got hmm. offended twelve years ago. Never been to church in twelve years. Got slammed. You know what that means. Radically I know slammed. what they, 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 they don't know. They don't know what that means. <laughs> radically got touched. His sister radically got touched. I, I think it, it, I it, think it, of slammed <laughs> when the Holy Spirit pins someone That's down exactly to the ground. That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's slammed. So my, I don't want to take all the time, but I just want to mention this very quickly that my heart is still in that area very heavily, and I do believe there's going to be this major outpouring. But, Sid, I want to say this, and one day we'll play this back, what I'm about to say. In the prophecy, the Lord said that there would be a major event happen in America. And this event will be so big that people will start leaving major cities. Now, I see people leaving West Coast cities. I see them leaving uh, up into uh, even the Chicago area, up in, for, for some reason, that mm -hmm. area. And they're going to go to more rural areas. And the Lord said, you've got to get the rural churches have to be prepared to teach the people because some of them will not have a great knowledge of the word. But they're going to leave to come to what they think are more secure areas than some of the mm -hmm. areas. I, I'm not going to say, unless I get the, the, the insight from the Lord, I, you, t you know I've seen tsunamis. And I, I saw know. one man that was, I, it just, it, it, I had a, rep a repetitive dream and vision two weeks, uh, every two weeks for a year. And I wouldn't even talk about it because I know the location mm -hmm. and I don't want people to get spooked. They have to hear from God themselves on, right. on movement. But I will tell you, there's really coming, and I think they will agree, a major revival that is a true blue turn back to God revival. And one more thing I'm going to say, my wife and I have discussed this. How in the world can people who claim to be Bible believers, teachers, preachers, filled with the Spirit, support some of the things people support. And my wife, who doesn't say much, she's a very quiet lady, she says, it's the wheat and tare. The wheat and tare are in the same field. Mm -hmm. The church has real believers, and we got fake believers. Right. And they're in the same church. And God, I feel the Holy Ghost, yeah. is going to supernaturally, he said, he said, don't you deal with it. Yep. He said, I will supernaturally start separating yeah. Wheat from tear. Yeah. And you know how a tear gets, gets, gets separated? Because when harvest time comes, it gets exposed. Yep. Mm. And you see it. You can see it in a field only at harvest time. Right. It looks the same, but it starts, it starts changing a color. And when the wind blows, I had somebody from Kansas say, when you have a tear, tears in the field, when the wind blows and the wheat's blowing with the wind, the tear won't move. Whoop, that'll preach. <laughs> okay. Come on, that'll preach. Now, here's the amazing thing. Rich, you were talking about that same thing to me. Yes. 
Tell yes, me. Uh, I see exactly what Perry's saying. Mm -hmm. There is coming a separation, uh, not only be, uh, on the member, the, the, the sheep, but also on the leadership. Yeah. You know, people that, that have been truly called and anointed of God are going to be sorted out from those that have been, been self-appointed yeah. or are in it for That's the money. That's true. Yeah. America, it's the, uh, uh, one of the few places in the world that I know where preachers are more into the money than obeying God. And God is going to judge that system. And it's going to allow it to happen by allowing persecution to expose their motives. Because there's coming persecution in America, and it's happening already in a sense that it's going to force you either to, to change your stand or to suffer and trust God. And I believe that God is allowing that to happen to expose, as Perry is saying, because true revival is going to bring exposure. We think revival is only about rolling on the ground and, and praying in tongues. Well, that's fun, right? But mm -hmm. true revival will expose the heart of people. It will bring out who you really are. You know, and right now in America, uh, churches, when I preach as an evangelist, we give you 45 minutes. We're going to be out of here so we can be uh, on the lunch line before the other church goes there. You know, in South America, where I'm from, church stops when the Holy Ghost is done. <laughs> and you know that. I'm used to four or five hours of services. You know, in Orlando, that's what we do. We're bringing a culture in our church where when the Holy Spirit's done, we're done. Because and when we want to cut the Holy Spirit out, what happens is we bring compromise, we bring religion, and we bring a controlling spirit. And that's what's happening in churches in America. And this year, God's going to begin to sort them out. And I pray that all of them will be taken away so the true servants of God can do the will of God by the Spirit of okay. God. Cindy, uh, you, you were talking about a shift coming. Uh, you were talking about new mantles that are coming. You were talking about this new generation, which if you look in the natural, you say, all these college kids, they don't stand a chance. But we don't look in the natural. What's coming? <laughs> well, I really feel full right now. Okay. <laughs> Number one, the universities are going to experience a move of God that's going to bring the fear of the Lord. Wow. <laughs> and that's hot off the press. Okay. Number two, people that have been crying out, and listen to me, for the anointing to fall on them. God is getting ready to anoint an army that is going to be so powerful to move in signs and wonders. It's going to be the supermarket. It's going to be in Walmart. It's going to be in McDonald's. It's going to be Target. I mean, everywhere. I mean, I mean, God is getting ready to move. Now, I want to say something that's going to happen with this. The pressure that is going to put on society is actually going to enrage Satan. And so there's going to be this persecution ridge, you know, that you've talked about. But what is going to happen is that if they continue to persecute the church and the singers who will stand up and not be ashamed and not be in political correctness, those networks, those media outlets are going to fall down. And the Lord is raising up an alternative voice that it's media revolutionaries. I'm telling you, the spirit of God, there's going to be YouTube revival. There's going to be, there's going to be social networking, new ideas. There's going to be these media revolutionaries are going to take away the wealth of these liberal networks that have dared touch the apple of God's eye. It's going to happen. You, you talk about YouTube millionaires. YouTube millionaires. That's right. It's going to, and I don't want to tell you, just believe some of you let the anointing come upon you. Just say, I take it. You know, I take it. That is like, you know, in Argentina, they go, I take it. It's mine. You know, I like it. It's mine. 
And so God is going to do that. And the other thing I see, and I want to prophesy over the United States, the Lord is getting ready to expose corruption that is so systemic, so endemic, so seemingly hidden that they thought they could not be rooted out, but the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is getting ready to reveal the covers are going to get ripped off. You will read in the national news. You're going to read in Wall Street Journal, you're going to read in some of these other headlines, and it's going to say, it is time for corruption to be exposed, or don't be in corruption. There's The headlines are going to be full of words about who was exposed, but now they're going to be exposed, and you write this down. They are going to be locked up, and God is going to expose. You know, this is going to be the best of times, and this is going to be the worst of times. And here's the thing, the choice is yours. I tell you, it's not too late. It is not too late. Choose today. I can tell you this. I don't even understand the concept of being a backslider. I don't understand those that say it's not necessary to uh, repent after your initial uh, turning to Jesus. I live, my, the Holy Spirit within me is so sensitive that the minute, as, as, as I, I believe you were talking, Perry, about uh, watch your mouth, uh, and the minute I, and I, I make mistakes, huh, welcome to the human race, uh, the minute it comes out of my mouth, I am quick, instant to repent because the good that is coming on planet earth will overtake you everything you've ever wanted everything you've ever prayed for it's not too late your whole family is going to come in you and your house will be saved What's going on with young people? The young people in treatment. Let, let, me, let me just give an example. When the Lord spoke to me, as you know, he spoke to me about fathering a generation. Totally something out of... Jensen Franklin told me, he said, you're not a youth pastor or a youth leader. Everybody knows Jensen probably mm -hmm. from Gainesville. Right. He said, how do you... I said, I have no clue how I'm going to do this. This year, right now, in January, we have two months before the conference. One conference already has 6,000 kids registered. The other had 8,000 registered. And we've not even started advertising it yet. And I'm telling you, you talk about the anointing. Oh, I feel something right here. I preached on Saturday night last year, and I started speaking Latin. I don't know Latin, but there were mm -hmm. people who knew Latin. And the Spirit of God gave a message in tongues in Latin, and the kids started running. There was 1,000 kids ran up to get the baptism. I look up on the—I'm going to get up and have to preach. I— <laughs> I, I looked up on the right side, and 50 kids fell out under the power with nobody laying hands on them, and all of them got drunk and started speaking in tongues. 700 young people received the baptism in 10 minutes. Okay. I, I, was, I was just going to ask Perry, is there hope for America? He just answered it before it I asked the question. Yeah, that is the hope. That's the hope in America. And, and Sid, here's the thing about these kids. This is the thing, because I've been dealing with, we have a dance team, a dance drama team. But let me say this. Here's the thing about them. I've never seen a generation, and I've been in ministry 40 years, just like you have. I've never seen a generation, like our girls don't want to date guys. They want to, they, you, you tell our kids, you can go to a, movie, a Christian movie night or a prayer meeting. They will choose the prayer meeting over the movie. Yep. These kids are so in tune with God. We, we've got 16-year-olds wanting to go on mission trips. Yep. They're like, they're sold out. Look here. They're not into things. They're not into money. They've seen family problems. They've seen their families go through stuff. They are so into God that it just absolutely is mind-blowing. And it's the Joel 2 generation and the Joel 2 army. Yeah. It's exactly what's happening. And one more quick thing. We talked about Jubilee. And what we're seeing here, I think, is a jubilee cycle actually enacted with what uh, they, the, the, the guest has said. If you look at it, jubilee has been counted wrong. 
Mm-hmm. Jubilee started in 1917 with the Belfar Declaration. Go 50 years, that'll tell you, that'll, that'll take you to 1967. Go 50 years, that'll take you to 2017. Hmm. 5777 is three sevens, which only repeats itself a thousand years from now. Hmm. In other words, we are in, I believe, the Joel 2 cycle, the, the real beginning of this thing. I'm talking about the real deal beginning. We're in, a, in, we're in a Jubilee revival cycle. We're in a Jubilee release cycle. And again, we're not exalting a man, but when you look at, uh, uh, at Donald Trump, and you look at number 45, the surprise, and you look at the 577, and as she said, the first, his first day in office, he's 70, seventh month, seven days, that is your 777 tied into the year 5777, which is the Jew, you know, the Jewish year is 5777. Yeah. And he is inaugurated on that year. Let me just tell you something. Only God could have orchestrated what he did. Now, now do you, let me ask you, do you want one inside nugget? It's a little bit on the political edge, but do you want in, one inside nugget or not? It's live. I have no choice. Oh, my Go goodness. It. It's live. <laughs> Jesus, help me. I'm not going to say too much, but, but the person, <laughs> since it's live, I just remembered it is live. No, no, but I want you to. Since, Don't pay attention to me. Let me just mention by someone who was in the hotel suite the night of the election. Mm-hmm. The other candidate was a shoe in knew they would win was being called by the name president, Madam mm-hmm. President. And when it shifted in Florida, a girl in the room told her family the whole atmosphere shifted. And anger arose and a lot of other things I won't I won't tell because this is live. But it was a shock to the other side. It they couldn't this is why they kept saying the vote can't be right. We have to have a recount. I want to tell you this whether you believe it or not, and there are people who don't believe this yet. Whether you believe or not, just like it was, and, and this is going to surprise some of you coming from me, it was the will of God for Barack Obama to be eight years as president. I believe that. Because there are certain things he did that he didn't know he did that fulfill the patterns of Lot and Noah. Oh, wow. Stay with me. As it was in the days of Lot, you know what the story of Lot's days were. Go read it. And he helped bring about that, not knowing it, probably not even knowing it's biblical. It was God's will for him to be in. But just as much as it was God's will for him to be there eight years, only God could have turned this thing around. Yes. And it's, it's, and all it is, it's a reprieve. Now, you listen, body of Christ, we have at least the next four years with a person friendly toward Christianity yes. and will we'll, we'll not allow people to say or do things negative toward Christianity to get Supreme Court justices in that will be constitutional conservatives and not way out in the left. Yes. And so we have to take advantage of the revival, come on, the yes. move of God, yes. Everything we can do, and we don't talk to me, somebody. We don't quit praying now. Amen. Okay. This is not the time to quit praying. That's for sure. Now, it's not just that he's friendly towards Christianity. Right. He loves Israel, Amen. and God's word has Amen. never changed. God's word said... Those that bless Israel, God will bless. Obadiah 115 says, as you have done to Israel, it will be done to you. I am so thrilled that we have someone in the White House that is for the land of Israel. Now, does that mean he's not for the Arabs? I'll tell you this, God is for the Arabs. God sent his son to die for the Arabs. Of course he is. Rich Vera, what is God showing you about Israel? You know, uh, I saw, as I mentioned to you before, whatever politics will not accomplish, that God was going to fight for his people, such as Bible days. There's going to be supernatural things that are going to take place that only God will take the credit in Israel. In fact, there is a revival coming to the land to the Russian Jews in the land of Israel, where the Holy Spirit will move with such a power and they will be the ones that will cause a great stirring among the other Jewish people in Israel in this season. Well, you may not know this, but I just read the latest statistics and the Russian Jews are coming in droves, in droves to the land of Israel. Uh, Cindy, what is God showing you about Israel? God is going to raise up young messianic evangelists that are so pure. They're going to be Nazarites. They're going to be pure in their love from God. 
and they are going to fill that nation with miracles. And I'm going to prophesy to you, you're going to be the father of that sin. God is going to use you in a massive way in this young generation. And they're going to they're going to want to know what you're saying because the Lord says, even as you have walked in the spirit of Elijah, you're going to loose the Elishas. And God says that they're going to come to you as a father and that orphan spirit that has been there because so many came from so many different places. The Lord's going to use you to heal their orphan heart and release them massively to shake nations. Well, I can just tell you this. There is such a presence of God in this studio that all things are possible. All things. All. Does that include your problem? Of course it does. We're coming into such a speeding up. We're coming into an outpouring of the glory of God like the world has never seen. And I, I can tell you this, uh, when we do our 40th anniversary show, I have, I have a man on that show that literally died in a dentist chair, went to heaven, and when he came back, he brought the glory with him. I, I, I have another man that all he does is pray, pray, pray. Whoever heard of something like that, guys? Pray. On, and you know what? Demons tremble. Sickness can't stand him. I mean, and then Jim Sonero is going to be on that anniversary show. Do you know who he is? He's only the guy that has led worship for so many years for Benny Hinn. And he tells me God is telling him to teach and worship for in the glory. So it, it's coming. The question is, when it comes, as my guests explained, it'll be a blessing or the opposite, if you're in sin, without holiness, you will not see God. Amen. You don't, despite what others are doing, you're accountable for yourself. Yes. Here is the good news, and that's why it's called good news. Whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, Amen. healed, and yes. delivered. If you want experiential knowledge with the God of love, and that's who he is, he is the God of pure love. You've never experienced this kind of love before. And I know you're created to experience this kind of love. How much love? He died a horrific death in your place. Who else would do that? Even if someone else would, it wouldn't do you any good because they have to be the perfect Passover lamb. He was the perfect Passover lamb. And if you will say this prayer with me and mean it with all of your heart, God is not a respecter of persons. He's a respecter of those that diligently seek him. Say this prayer out loud. Dear God, I'm a sinner. Against you, you. and you alone have I sinned, and And I'm so sorry. sorry. I believe believe the blood of Jesus, the the precious blood blood that takes away the sins of the whole world, world. has has made me free. And I ask Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. And live inside of me. me. Amen. Amen. One quick prayer from everyone. Let's start with you, Rich. You know, um, while we're talking, God was healing people. I got a text from a a friend named Nick Casina. When I released the word about the cancer on the ear, he says, uh, I am sharing it. Uh, He says, the spot on the ear, it's gone. God healed him as he's watching right now. Now. So... That's what, by the way, Cindy, that's what Christian television was created for. Right. (laughs) Right. You know, so I believe, you know, the Lord wants to empower you. But not only to do the works of God, but also to to realize that you have power over the enemy. 
you know, and our job is to inspire you so you can do it with the power of the spirit that resides on the inside of you. And I believe in this season, God is going to bring the evangelists back in America and in the world big time. And many of those are sitting right here on this audience. And I just want to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone that is hearing my voice around the world that this will be a season of release and of impartation, of awakening for their lives. That this will be a season with the power of God, the mantles that Cindy was talking about. Lord, we take those mantles, Father, in the name of Jesus. And we declare that we will see the move of God in our homes, with our children, in our marriages, in our jobs, in America, back in the churches of America. Every denomination will be invaded by by the move of the Holy Spirit and we pray God that America once again will be the place that will send men and women of God to the nations of the world to bless the nations in Jesus name amen, amen. okay Cindy Amen. So let's lift our hands. Let's let the mantles fall, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those that want the mantle of evangelists, come on, right now, let it fall upon you. Those prayer warriors, let the mantle fall upon you. Those God is calling to prophesy, receive it now. Just receive it right now. Those that said, I've got to have more miracles. Come on, receive it right now. There's an impartation taking place. Whatever you want, come on, take it. Say, I'm going going to receive it. The anointing for racial reconciliation. Receive it now. The anointing for John 17, you 19 anointing. Just receive it right now. Oh, I'm be small. Oh, oh. Well, I, I tell you what God is telling me right now. It seems minor compared to what Cindy just prayed. But there are people that have pain in their mouth, in their teeth in particular, and God is healing you right now. There are others that have pain in their back. If you will stand up right where you are, whether it's studio audience or at their home, you stand up and bend over. You are healed. Back. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in yeah. Jesus' name. There are people with arthritis in their hands. You start moving your hands and your your uh, your wrist. There's carpal tunnel. Mm. You're being healed. That's right. Uh, it, it, it's going. It's so strong in backs that if you don't take it now, shame on you. Yeah. Perry. Yeah. Oh, praise I feel led to pray that the gifts will be restored in the body of Christ. Lisa. One minute. Let me say this. A woman who is Jewish in our town, went to a lady to pay a bill. This lady's a Christian. She goes to our, to our ministry. Her daughter had run away from home without her heart medicine. Mm -hmm. And to make a long story short, the woman said, can I pray for you? She said, I'm Jewish. She said, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Prayer works. She prayed for the woman. The woman said nothing. And she prayed in tongues. She prayed in the Holy Ghost. The woman's daughter came home. She called her and she said, but you didn't tell me you knew how to speak Hebrew. She said, I don't. Hmm. She said, how did you do that? She says, the Holy Spirit. She says, the amazing thing is you prayed in Hebrew a prayer, a Jewish prayer that I prayed over my daughter when she was a baby. Wow. They both got saved in church Tuesday night and came to the Lord this past Tuesday. Oh, yeah. We need it's, the gifts. It's a new season. We need the gifts. Perry, uh, I had the privilege of meeting Perry Stone's father. I interviewed him. And one of the things is he's sharing these supernatural things that are happening to him. His father had an amazing gift in speaking in supernatural languages and tongues. And that the people understood what he was saying. My dad one time operated all seven of the nine gifts in one hour. I saw it. Hmm. So I grew up under this. So let's put our hands up for restoration of gifts. Father, the body of Christ has to have a restoration of the gifts of the Spirit. Signs and wonders have to come to the church. You never took them away from us, God. Our spirits became cold, and doubt came in, and unbelief came in, and denominationalism came in, and people turned away. I ask you, God, that your people will have words of wisdom and word of knowledge and tongues of interpretation for foreign people, and it will be a sign and a wonder, and we give you the glory. All the glory belongs to you to uplift your name and the name of your Holy Son, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hey, we're we're, we're going to be going off the air, but I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> you just keep worshiping God, pray in your supernatural language. I'll just say this real quick. 
If you will pray in tongues, your spirit will grow. Your gifting will grow. Your destiny will grow. Your vision will grow. That's why Paul said, I pray in tongues more than any man. Well, he was Southern. He said, y'all, you're right. Uh, Paul was Southern. Let me, let me bless you. Oh, the Lord. And I'm praying on this side of the cross from this Jewish prayer. The Lord has already blessed you. Do you know that the Lord has already smiled upon you? Do you know that the Lord has already gifted you? Do you know the Lord has already surrounded you with his favor? Do you know that the Lord has given you his shalom? In Hebrew, that means completeness. Completeness in your spirit. Completeness in your soul and completeness in your body, in the name of pure love, Yeshua HaMashiach Tzikenu, Jesus the Messiah, our righteousness. God bless you. Thank you, guests, for being with me. Bless you. Is it possible to hear the voice of God directly? Is the gift of prophecy only to be given to special people? Or can any believer be used by God through his powerful gift of the Holy Spirit? The truth is God is still speaking in and through believers, and he wants to speak through you too. Cindy Jacobs wants to teach you how to listen for God's prophetic words and bring his message to the world around you. Call now and get the 2017 Prophetic Outlook gift package, which includes Cindy Jacobs' landmark book, The Voice of God, plus this anointed three-part audio CD series, The 2017 Prophetic Outlook. On these CDs are three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera. They will reveal powerful words that God has given them for you during this breakthrough year. This series is exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9457. Cindy Jacobs' book is for you, whether you're a new believer or already operating in the gift of prophecy. Through this book, you will learn to hear God's voice more clearly and speak His prophetic words to others. Begin to exercise the God-given ability of an effective prophetic intercessor. Learn how to deliver prophetic words to redeem, uplift, build faith, and help bring new direction in your life and to the lives of others. Understand the biblical protocol concerning speaking prophetic words in the church. Find out the keys on how to interpret prophetic dreams and visions. Plus, you will receive this anointed three-part audio CD series, the 2017 Prophetic Outlook. It includes three prophetic voices of our time. Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera, exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience. On CD number one, Cindy Jacobs delivers the word of the Lord for 2017 as given to the Apostolic Council of Prophetic Elders, and she prays for you. You will also hear the complete prophetic word of the Lord as given to Cindy, read by Giselle Fleming, known for her role in the Christian movie, The War Room. On CD number two, Perry Stone delivers a right now word for this year. He answers these questions. Has our nation been given a reprieve? What is Satan's manifesto against America? What is God's assignment for the United States in 2017? How can we walk in all the promises and blessings that God has for us in 2017? On CD number three, Rich Vera shares a specific word for you concerning 2017 as being a time of long-awaited breakthroughs and unexpected victories in the areas of family, salvations, relationships, healing, and finances. Don't miss out on getting the 2017 Prophetic Outlook gift package, which includes Cindy Jacobs' landmark book, The Voice of God, plus this anointed three-part audio CD series, The 2017 Prophetic Outlook. On these CDs are three prophetic voices of our time, Cindy Jacobs, Perry Stone, and Rich Vera. They will reveal powerful words that God has given them to help you be ready to overcome and walk in all the promises and blessings God has for you during this breakthrough year. This series is exclusive to our It's Supernatural audience, yours, for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9457. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9457 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.